Freshman Congressman Madison Cawthorn made headlines yesterday after the North Carolina newcomer blasted Washington lawmakers over orgies and drug use while on the Warrior Poet Society. The remarks came after the show's host, John Lovell, asked Cawthorn how similar D.C. really is to the popular show, House of Cards. Let's watch. The sexual perversion that goes on in Washington, I mean, it, being kind of a young guy in Washington with the average age of probably 60 or 70, and I look at all these people, a lot of them that I, I, you know, I've looked up to through my life, I've always paid attention to politics, guys that, you know, it, then all of a sudden you get invited to, like, well, hey, we're going to have kind of a, a, a sexual get-together at one of our homes, you should come. And I'm like, what, what, what did you just ask me to come to? Yeah. Uh, and then you realize they're asking you to come to an orgy. Yeah. Uh, or, or the fact that, you know, there's some of the people that are leading on the movement to try and remove, you know, addiction in our country. And then you watch them do, you know, a key bump of cocaine right in front of you. And it's like, wow, this is, this is wild. Well, Republicans were reportedly furious over Cawth Cawthorn's remarks. Leader Kevin McCarthy said he plans to talk to Cawthorn over his orgy allegations. And while some members think it's all a lie, other GOP members are saying if it's true, Cawthorn should name names. Otherwise, it maligns the entire institution. And Kevin McCarthy isn't the only one seeking Cawthorn's testimony. Congressman Scott Perry, who chairs the House Freedom Caucus, which Cawthorn is a member of, said he plans to speak to Cawthorn one-on-one -on -one about the comments. In regards to how this may affect Cawthorn's membership in the caucus, Perry said, we will discuss that when we get to it. So, I, I mean, I, I look, guys, I, I'm not there in Washington like you guys are. So, Ryan, Robbie, tell us, is it true? Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I know exactly who he's talking about. <laughs> but we were, well, uh, we were talking about this earlier. So I don't we, know. Don't to, we don't need to be coy about it. Like, Well, I'm not, I'm not going to say it in case we get... No, oh, the, the, Roger Stone speaks right. openly. That's who I was uh, thinking of. Roger Stone speaks openly. He was profiled by Jeffrey Tubin in The New Yorker. He, like, he's a party guy. Yeah. Like, I'm not talking about the cocaine use, but, like, the orgy stuff. Like, he's, he's wildly open about it. thought like, there was, on the record, swinging yeah. acknowledged. He's a, he's a swinger. That he's is the, so that's like, the figure I thought of. If, if Cawthorn was referring to someone in... So that, that's just a political activist. If Cawthorn was referring to a sitting member of Congress, I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, and I if he's imagine it's true, but I don't, I don't know. If he's referring to Roger Stone, it's the lamest use of an anonymous person ever to like say something you know, kind of titillating. So that is a widely shared detail. But if he is having parties, then he would be inviting people, right? And those people would presumably well, be... Well, he's down in Tampa doing his Florida man thing. Yeah. I, look, I'm so, sure it's I going know. on. I, I, have I don't no, trust Madison Cawthorn. And also, like, just to be yeah. clear, I am a libertarian. I have no problem with any of those things as long as they're consensual and everybody's on board. No problem. I don't have any problem with it. I suspect many voters do and don't want their, their Congress people doing those things. I just want my Congress people not to steal my money and raise my taxes and regulate me. So, so. We, we actually, well, we can actually yeah, can I, fact check something that Cawthorn said recently. He said that uh, it's true that Nancy Pelosi is a giant drunk, and he, he knows because he's you know, <laughs> in, in the rooms. It's a lie. Like, Nancy Pelosi is a teetotaler. She doesn't drink. And what, what else is a lie is the idea that Madison Cawthorn would be in any room with Nancy Pelosi other than the floor of the house. Like, that's it. Like, he's not, he's not in rooms with Nancy Pelosi. And so... If she he's does seem like she's a wine lush, though. Are you saying she doesn't right, but drink she's not. at all? It's, she's not. Really? Yeah. Right. Wow. Uh, and so, I mean, and that's widely known about her. And so, right, she, our, ice cream is her, is her vice and power. Yeah. Well, like yeah, that, we know those, about that. Yeah. Ice cream and power are the things. <laughs> ice that cream she's and into. millions of dollars. So you know, yes. you know that Cawthorn falsely claimed that he had some knowledge of uh, Nancy Pelosi. For, which he doesn't, and then said something about her, which you would think would be true because you're like, yeah, she seems that way. Turns out it wasn't true. So you, we know that he has a penchant for lying about this sort of thing already. But can we talk about the key bump thing? That was pretty yeah, funny, that wasn't it? Yeah, can't go unnoticed. <laughs> like, what a, what, a, what a tell. Yeah. I mean, like if, Do you what follow you us? About? Kim's not following. No. Kim, Kim's like, don't know what you're talking about. If you use the phrase key bump, like, the chances are pretty good. Let's be careful uh, here. You Let's are, not have, make any accusations. You're, that you're a key bumper yourself. Yeah. People can Google what, what, a, it, what, what is a key that? bump is. It's, that's it's how, when you stick a key into a bag of cocaine that's and how squirt you it off the key. It. Yeah. Yeah. That's how some people oh. consume it. It's like a, it's like a, people consider it a trashy way to consume it. Not that a rolled up dollar bill is any less disgusting. Yeah. You know, it's filled with as much grotesquery as anything else. But so it, pe people commented on his familiarity with, with the terminology. 
in a, in a way that was kind of revealing in the same way that we were talking about this earlier. Larry Craig, who, uh, who was kind of, who was arrested in this Minneapolis airport bathroom. Uh, there's this transcript that the cop who entrapped him released, and he says to the cop, uh, he said, I didn't cruise you. you, you cruised me. And all of straight America was like, what's cruising? What does that mean? <laughs> what, is, yeah. what, is that, what does that mean? So you've kind of like revealed yourself as a member of a, of, of a community, whether by the terminology that you're familiar yeah. with. Well, I yeah. guess that we now know I've never done any cocaine, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't care about any of these things. People should do whatever vice. It does not matter to well, me. It is except... no concern of mine whatsoever. It should all be legal. And the greater scandal is the the evils our government visits on all of us, not what they're doing. And, and well, it, should be, it should be regulated I, I so there's no fentanyl in it. Right. I agree that it should be legal, that people should be able to decide and do whatever they want. But it is illegal right now. And if our lawmakers are doing something illegal, they should have the same book thrown at them that gets thrown at the average person sure, in sure. middle yeah. and lower class America. Well, but we just shouldn't throw the book at those right. people. Put all the books away. At the, at the every, nobody right. should get books thrown at them. No, or no, anything. no, Don't no throw throwing at books people. away either, Ryan. We're not going to throw books away. We're not going <laughs> to. Books should be on the shelf now, in the library of the public <laughs> school. <laughs> don't throw the books. Don't burn them. Don't. Yeah. It depends the content, it's, right? Yeah. Well, if, if you don't like it, you put it on the high shelf. You know, if yeah. you want the little ones. Six year olds can't reach it. Right. Just yeah. put it on the top shelf. Problem that's, solved. That's a, that's a genius solution to the whole thing. It really is. And no, la no ladders in there. But yeah, I mean, to his point, Washington is a party town. Everybody drinks all the time. Not it's not like House of like, Cards. It's like V. That's another way you know he's, uh, he's not a trustworthy nar narrator here. It is, DC is Veep, not it's House Veep. of Cards. Yeah. So if, and if you think it's House of Cards, then you're not actually familiar with how Washington works. And despite you know, his, his career as what a donor's kid who got an intern and then wound up in Congress, I don't think he actually knows as much about Washington as he thinks. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, he's young, right? Isn't he the youngest member of Congress? So he's just kind of getting in there. It's fun. And he's and let's get let's maybe... get him on here. I, we, I, yeah, let's have Madison. That would be great. <laughs> he, he, un, unfiltered, clearly yeah. willing to share things. I, we, totally. The reason we don't do. Uh, oh, he's been on. Oh, he's been on the show. I don't Nor, know. Nora, let's us. get him back on. Yeah. The reason we don't do a lot, uh, we do some. We do interviews with some political uh, figures uh, or people, you know, who are interesting. We think it'll be interesting to the audience. We don't do a lot of them because it's, it's so hard to get, especially when you're doing with a seasoned politician. It's right. so hard to get them to actually say interesting things to get beyond whatever talking points they have in their commercials. And you know, we don't want to waste your time. I'm speaking directly to our audience now, but uh, but that that doesn't mean we should we can't do them or, or, or shouldn't do them. Uh, it's just about finding the right people, interesting people who are going to speak candidly on issues that might be of interest. And well, listen, maybe Cawthorn, Cawthorn is one, is one of them. <laughs> yes, so. Yeah, yes. if he's going to drop names on this show, let's bring him on. Name names, Madison, let's do it. <laughs> All right, we're going to get our bookers right on that. Yeah. Tomorrow on Rising, we have another stellar show coming your way. The Hill's Hannah Trudeau discusses some of her latest reporting on why progressive candidates are distancing themselves from the progressive label. And Jonathan Tomari is with us to break down some new polling out of the Pennsylvania primary. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. And for those of you who like to listen while on the go, we are now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. So be sure to check that out. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Bye.